Hello, welcome back. I've been playing a little bit of Isaac, and so far it's not going so great. I think I'm on like a, a minus seven <laughs> streak right now, but you know, that's how, how the game is sometimes. Sometimes you get good runs, and sometimes you get a lot of uh, good runs that maybe I kind of screwed up by being too greedy. Oh, then there I go again. But we'll see how today goes. Maybe let me get a win in. Oh my god, the game knows. It heard me talking and is like, I think you're gonna get a win in. Please. So yeah. Hope, uh, please spare me. Oh my god. I'm, uh, not doing so hot, but it's alright. I did end up, I, I mentioned this in one of my other videos, the, I think it was the, one of the Elden Ring ones, but oh my goodness, I'm doing terribly. I did end up watching part of Season 3 of Love, Death, and Robots with my brother. Not very useful for Sidon, but that's okay. The content, or the quality of the, of the episode so far has been pretty good in my opinion. It's not as amazing as like some of the the episodes in season one, but there is the second episode of the third season. I actually think might be like one of the best ones, just like overall. The uh, and again, I guess spoiler warning. If you plan on watching it, maybe uh, would mute the audio or not watch the video for now. But the. The second episode is basically like a monster horror film, and one, I always have liked those types of movies, like I really like monster movies, oh. and two, it is in a, you know, it's like in a single episode format, so it takes all of the like, you know, action and suspense and all that other stuff that you would expect in a monster movie and cuts out everything that isn't necessary to delivering that experience, and it does a really good job of it, in my opinion, too. The... Uh, well... I, I guess I don't really... I'll Maybe I'll wait a little bit before talking about what actually happens in the episode, because I do want to avoid spoiling it. But... The... The episode is the... Uh, Oh, nice. The episode is very, you know, it's it's the standard length for for that show, so it's only like 30 minutes. But it manages to deliver like a an amazing like monster movie experience in my opinion in that time. And it moves so fast, as I mentioned, just cuz you know, the they cut a lot of they basically cut all of the unnecessary stuff you often see in monster movies out. The storyline is entirely focused on what's going on with the characters and how they plan on, you know, dealing with their situation, as well as, like, keeping you sort of on edge about the monster because it reveals more and more, I guess... They're kind of, you know, I don't, I don't want to say they're plot twists because the movie, you know, it's, or, so I'm referring to it as a movie. The episode is relatively short, so, you know, I, I don't know if uh, I would necessarily call them a plot twist because of how quickly it develops. But you find out more and more about the monster as the episode is going on, and it's, uh, it just becomes like scarier and scarier basically as it progresses and you oh nice okay we got this guy here pretty easy to deal with and uh why okay but yeah the the episode so far in the third season have been great so if you've been sort of I don't know, holding off on it for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why you would do that if you watched the previous two episodes, or two seasons, but if you have been, great. I would definitely recommend watching it if you enjoyed either of the other two seasons.
the one I'm talking about that I really liked is called Bad Traveling, by the way. It's the, the second episode. Come on. Nice. Got some bombs. Hopefully my little fairy friend here will let me find something useful. Come on. Yeah. Oh, wow, well, I almost blew myself up there. I was about to shoot at those. <laughs> Hoping to finish watching the remainder of season three this weekend, but we'll see if time allows. Things have been a little busy. 85% damage for every six units that we hit. Oh, that's uh, the accuracy one. Yeah, an accuracy item. Interesting. <clears throat> uh, something else I was actually just watching today is the documentary on uh, Apple TV that just came out. Well, it's not. Well, is it a documentary? I don't know. I guess it is a documentary, but it's a. Uh, oops. Oh my God! What am I doing? It's a their documentary, and called Prehistoric Planet. And honestly, they've really uh, brought out all the stops on it. I'm very impressed so far. The quality of the you know, CGI or animation or whatever it is they're using is very high. Like, it's definitely the highest I've ever seen in something that wasn't, like, a Hollywood dinosaur movie, I guess. And the way that they do everything in the film is very beautiful. It's, like, definitely more like a nature documentary than any other dinosaur uh, film I've seen. And in particular, one thing that really stands out to me is the way the dinosaurs sort of uh, interact with their world feels very authentic, I would say is the word I would use. Uh, what I mean by that is, I feel like a lot of times, oh no, ah, oh, dang, I can't close enough attention. Uh, a lot of times I feel when you watch dinosaur movies or that sort of thing, the dinosaurs are always a little kind of like dull. They don't really, they don't really exhibit like a lot of uh, behaviors outside of just like, you know, eating and maybe if they're predators, like, you know, roaring and that sort of thing. But this new documentary, the dinosaurs, all of them kind of like reminded me of you know, real animals in some way. And what I mean by that is, uh, take, there's one episode where they have a, a segment on titanosaurs. And the titanosaurs, when I was watching it, they kind of reminded me a lot of, like, giraffes, because they were talking about their, uh, mating behavior and how they would, like, fight each other to get the attention of a female, for example. And... Yeah, I mean, they would they would stand up on their hind legs and fight each other and, like, bash each other with their necks and that sort of thing. And it's just really cool to see. Uh, <laughs> the dinosaurs are also a little... The way they're, um, I guess, designed <laughs> for, the, for the movie, it's, like, very up-to-date with, like, you know, the... I guess the most recent. Uh, ooh, do I want a double room? I don't have any HP. I feel like we need angel deals. It's like very up to date with, I guess, what's current in paleontology. The, you know, raptors and uh, other dinosaurs like them, like the velociraptor and similar creatures, they all have. They all have uh, feathers, and they look a lot more like birds, as I guess you would expect, uh, if, if you've been, if you've seen, like, more recent stuff on what dinosaurs are, were like, and I think that's maybe also why, oopsie, they feel a lot more, um, you know, how I said that, that they felt a lot more authentic, I think that's part of it as well, is they have them behave a lot like birds, so... You know, you you kind of see that 
but you kind of see the behaviors and patterns that you would see in real animals reflected in them, and um, it adds quite a bit. I already mentioned this, but it's also, you know, very beautiful. The creatures are all very colorful and uh, unique. Whoa, almost got me. Which I really liked. Mushroom. Dare you challenge me? Away. Okay, yeah, so far we've seen, I think, two episodes? Yeah, I think we've seen two of the episodes. We're releasing like one every day this week. Uh, I don't remember if it's two or three, but we've seen all the ones that have come out. They're all narrated by, oopsie, they're all narrated by David Attenborough as well, which is pretty cool, just because, you know, he's got the iconic documentary voice, so it's always a, a fun thing to sort of hear as you're watching it. What could this be? Eh, whatever. If you want that, I guess we'll get this. That's not very useful. Bye bye. Money, that's nice. I guess I got all my money back. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna run over here. I would love to find another soul heart or two so I can go into the curse room. But I don't want to be at just 1 HP. It seems a little scary. This uh, item we picked up that makes it so that you don't aren't supposed to miss is making me like, be paranoid about shooting extra tears, which is honestly probably worse than just firing and missing a bunch, so I probably shouldn't do that. Uh, that seems worth it. Oh, hello. It's bloody, bloody fly. Nice. Not a whole lot has been going on for me, so don't have a whole lot of anecdotes, I guess. One thing that uh, has been happening recently is that it's been raining a lot. <laughs> it's literally been raining like non-stop for the last couple days here. Which I don't really mind, because, you know, I work from home, so it doesn't really affect me in any way. And I like the rain, so nice to sort of watch um, from, you know, the inside. One thing I... Ooh, nice. One thing I uh, was thinking about, though, is, like, how it affects... Oh my god, these guys are going crazy. Look at them. Whoa! Calm down. Oh, this must be because of Broken Wash. I don't like that. <laughs> I kind of wish I hadn't picked that up. But, uh... Yeah, one thing I realized when it was raining so much is, uh... I'm not sure... how long, like, it can rain like that before it becomes a problem for the bees. Because, you know, when it rains, they... Even if it doesn't rain, if it's, like, overcast, they don't... They don't go out very often. Like, n not very many of them will go out. So, you know, I'm uh, worried that maybe they're just not going to gather enough food for themselves or something like that. Let's look at some of these. Normally, I don't like playing these machines because they're just kind of slow. But if you can play three of them at once, that's not too bad. Uh, and I've lost patience. Bye bye. Did I already find the shop here? Yeah, I got the broken watch there. Uh, so yeah, I've been uh, thinking about that, wondering if I need to, I don't know, like feed, feed the hive or anything like that. I think they'll be okay, because, you know, obviously wild hives do just fine when it rains here, and uh, they don't have anyone to feed them, so... <laughs> I imagine that they don't really need me to intervene. 
Um, I opened the hive last week, whoa. And the bees were doing exceptional. They... Oh, no, I almost got hit by that. That would have been a little embarrassing. When I opened it, there was a ton of uh, burr comb at the top of the hive. And I don't know how familiar you are with beekeeping, but burr comb is just what people refer to when the bees build honeycomb, anything, anywhere you don't want them to build it. Um, and so in my case, they were building it on top of the wooden frames where you want them to put their honeycomb. I'm gonna play this once or twice. Oh! Well, that was lucky. Although, it doesn't really help me, to be honest. The, uh... So, like, when I took the lid off, there's all the frames where the bees uh, start putting their honey and, like, their eggs and all that, or their, yeah, their larvae and all that. And on top of those frames, they had put... Um... Honeycomb. And so... I removed all that, but... You know, I wasn't upset to see that because the nice thing is that if the bees are putting fur comb in places like that, that usually means that they're, they feel like they don't have enough room. Uh, oh, come on. Yeah. So, you know, when I looked at the individual frames in the, in the box, they all had a nice amount of larvae and, you know, lots of... Uh, honey in many of them, and lots of pollen in others. So they basically have like the first box completely full. I'm wondering if maybe there's no other beehives like in my area, because I mean, I, I guess I'm no expert since this is my first year keeping the bees, but it seems like my hive, they are growing very quickly, like the amount of resources they're gathering, they're doing so in very good time. And so I suspect, that's that's why I suspect that there may be no other hives in the area. Uh, which would be great, honestly, because it means that, you know, my bees would be able to keep all the resources in the area to themselves. Um, will this get rid of my, my fairy? Because I do actually like having the fairy. But... I also like this item. Yeah, I did. That's okay. I think this is worth it. I would I would trade the fairy for a little bit of extra damage. Since now I do a ton of damage. Uh, so I actually put a second box on the hive. They, they have two boxes now, which is great. And I do not like. Thank you. I can blow you up. So next week, or maybe the week after, I'm going to open the hive again and we'll see how much progress they've made. I'm hoping that they will have completely filled up the first box, which might be possible based on how quickly they're going. Uh, it is very... like... If they did completely fill up, or nearly completely fill up the first box, they'll be doing extremely well. <laughs> like, even I know... Uh, that that will be, like, ridiculously well for them to have uh, done that already. Like this. Like this. Okay. Oh. oh, that guy was booking it. And, uh, you know, even if they don't, like I said, they're already doing much better than I was expecting them to be doing, so... I think they're in a good position to, you know, set themselves up for this winter. I think from what I've read, you want your beehive to have at least two boxes of, uh, of deeps, which are like the big boxes, uh, full of, you know, uh, stuff they need to survive. So, uh, larva, pollen, that sort of thing. And then after you get two deep boxes, um, that are dedicated to the bees. At that point, you know, you can put smaller boxes called supers on top. Oops, no, I don't want that. Or do I? Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. The poop has been kind to me, but I don't really need any more money. Two bags at the start. I need that. So yeah, uh, if they fill the first box up, they'll be able to work on the second box very quickly. 
or for the rest of the the uh, summer, I guess. And hopefully that will mean that you know, late summer and fall, I can put some honey supers on the hive and maybe even um, start thinking about collecting a little bit of honey from them. I wasn't anticipating or planning on collecting any honey from them this first year. So unless they do like unbelievably well, I probably okay, not once. I probably won't. Just you know, to be cautious. I don't want to. I want the. I want to set them up to be like successful the first year, so that way that you know the next year they'll be in a good position at the start of the year to the come out of the out of the winter ready to go. Right. I feel I'm feeling pretty powerful on this run. I already got. And damage, and that's before my multiplier for that target item kicks in. Wait, this does not do what I think it does, right? Yeah, that's not the one I thought of. I thought it was the monkey's paw or whatever. The one that gives you HP when you almost die. So I think unless I grow at this point, I'm probably going to win this run. Uh, which feels great, because I think I'm now on a negative 10 losing streaks. <laughs> Well, nice, nice. Even more stats. Yeah. Ooh, I do like that item. Let's take that. Blow you up. Oh. Um, always afraid of the laser beam attack. Oh, what the heck? Go ahead, me. More angel deals. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think I've actually completed very much on this file for Judas. Let me check. Yeah, I've only um, gone up once, so still pretty much need to do everything. I think I'm too slow. Yeah, I already missed boss rush, but I mean, this build is strong, but I think it would still be kind of annoying to do boss rush. It's not like as broken as the other build I had on the victory lap where I could... Uh, basically just it like immediately clear a room when I entered it so It'd be nice if I could find the shop now definitely love to oh my goodness I just uh, walked into some spikes okay let's just do more bombs I don't need more bombs They're falling so slowly because of the, uh, the stopwatch. But on the bright side, the spike things are also going quite slowly, so... This... this... Temperance? Sure. Temperance. There you go. Oh. So this chance for a bonus hurt from chests, tinted rocks, and machines. Destroyed machines. Random heart. What does this one do? Get dropped from poop? I feel like there's not going to be much poop anymore, so we may as well do this. this. Almost walked into the fire. Oh man. A uh, very busy day at work today, but it was. Good day, I would say. I had, uh... I made a lot of progress on the project I'm working on. And the project I'm working on is not... Oh my god, I almost walked into the spikes again. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, what was I saying about how the only way I could really lose at this point is if I throw the run? But, uh... Yeah, the... Oh wait, there's some hearts in the in this room, right? Miraculous. Uh, which one? There's a hole. Because I'm a little slow right now, right? Yeah, normally I don't have to stop that room. Right. Nice. Take this. I'm also just going to make another hole, because I don't want to... I don't want to take any more damage from the spikes. Um, yeah, the project I'm working on is not, you know, all that, really. Don't hit me. 
It's not all that complicated or anything like that. It's just that uh, I have a bunch of stuff going on right now at work. Like, multiple... Not projects I'm working on, but I'm just involved in a, in a bunch of different things. And so even though the project itself is not all that complicated, um, I am spread relatively thin across the project, so I can't... Uh, you know, I have to be pretty efficient with my time. I can't just... Really dabble. So, oh, today was a nice productive day. Got a lot done. I was pretty happy with that. Familiar stealing stuff. It would be useful for the devil room if I got in, and I haven't really been using my item anyways. So. Oh wait, I have two. Nice. I forgot. Did I just get that? Yeah, yeah. I just bought the backpack. Right. I want my item room, my item room from this floor too. There it is. Um, <clears throat> I also had some meetings, like uh, social meetings with coworkers that I uh, like working with, and you know some of my friends at work too. So that was a good time. Do I want? Oh, that's not you. So I don't want to make that. Follows my movements. That's okay, but I think I could be better. Something better. Change your tears to a laser ring that travels across the room. Um. Do I need this? A laser ring. Sure, why not? Okay. I mean, it just makes it so that it's hard to miss now, so. Not gonna complain about that. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of this. Can I just spam it? No, I can't spam it. Eh, this might have been a mistake. Oh well. Look at this. It does do a good chunk of damage. But I feel like it's not triggering the the target anymore, so I definitely am not a fan of this actually. Oh, there's the double pill. Do I want that? Yeah. Well, that was not great. <laughs> oh well. I guess I'm not gonna complain about some HP. Acropolis 2. Going a bit slow, but alright. I feel like I've been taking a little more damage than I should, so I don't want to go too quick and then end up walking into more spikes. <clears throat> so that, um... Episode of Love, Death, and Robots? I guess I'll just talk about it. Like, anyone who... <laughs> you know, it's not like a ton of people are watching these videos, so... Just, uh, if you haven't seen it yet and you want to watch it... Uh, you know, just spoiler warning again, but the, the plot of the episode is interesting because it starts off like right in the middle of the action. Oh, come on. When use causes a random item in the shop or double room to become free. That's not that great because I already have Mr. Me. Yeah, that's not really all that helpful. It's also random. Yeah, don't need that. But the episode starts off just like right in the middle, like right in the thick of it, because uh, you're on like a sh the you're on the ship with the characters for the episode. The whole thing takes place on a ship, basically. And uh, what's happening when the episode starts is they're like basically under attack by a sea creature on six troll bombs. No, thank you. Which turns out to be this giant crab, essentially. Um, and, you know, it kind of just looks like a big crab, so, you know, you don't really make too much of it. It's like, oh, it's like a kraken or something like that. You know, it's just a wild, a big wild animal, essentially. Uh, and what happens is it makes its way into the bottom of the ship after killing a bunch of people and, like, fighting its way through. What does this do again? This takes you to the item room, right? Okay. 
Pretty good. Take it. And... Yeah, so the, the giant crab creature kills a bunch of the crewmates and then goes into the... Um, the hold of the ship. Essentially, uh, I guess, hide. Or, I guess you don't know what it's doing there. But, you know, it's down there. Uh, great items here. Not bad. Got some cards, too. The devil... Uh, that. Good one. And 10% chance to shoot piercing tears. I don't need that. Spawns of slaughter. Fortune machine. I don't really need that either. Um. Goes. Ow. <laughs> oh, wait. There's a, a door over here. So. You know, the, the crewmates are trying to figure out what to do, and they basically decide to, to, to what is it called, uh, draw straws to see who's going to have to go down and try to deal with the giant crab creature, because I guess they don't want to, like, just leave it on the ship. And it's, it's, it's also, it just to give you an idea of how large it is, it's like, you know, probably around the size of like a very large truck I would say that's kind of what it looked like it was uh, vertically easily as tall as like two people and you know it's crab so obviously it's quite large and bulky and it has like armor so they weren't able to deal with it they were like trying to fight it off with um, spears and axes and that sort of thing the ship is basically just a giant stale like a giant uh, sailboat, essentially. Uh, and so yeah, they draw straws to see who's going to have to go down to deal with the, the giant crab creature. And the person who draws the straw, of course, turns out to be the big, oopsie, the big uh, brawny guy on the crew. So he basically just refuses to go down there. And he, they decide to essentially force the captain to go down there and no devil deal huh that's fine so when the captain goes down there you know he's got like a little machete which is obviously not going to do anything to the to the giant crab and uh he you know gets chased off by the crab when when it sees him it like chases him to try to eat him and gets away and it just turn it turns out that the crab can like uh, use corpses as puppets to talk. It's pretty crazy. Uh, and that's like the first, you know, how I mentioned there's kind of like a, uh, a reveal or like a plot twist every so often with the episode. That's like the first one is you find out that the crab is like, you know, intelligent. Uh, you know, it's intelligent enough to talk, at least. It's not like very eloquent or anything like that, but, you know, uh, it's a giant crab that goes around eating people, so it probably doesn't need to be all that eloquent. In any case, they... it, it like makes a deal with the captain, which is kind of funny, where uh, they agree that the crab will like let him live if it helps get it to the nearest uh, island where there's like a bunch of people, and basically the crab is like, yeah, I, I just want to like eat everyone on that island. It's, and the thing that I really liked about that episode is the captain in the episode is uh, quite clever, I would say. Especially in the context of the episode, you know, obviously there's things the captain could have done better or whatever, but we as the viewers have a lot of context that he doesn't have. For example, there's a lot of scenes where it shows the captain and the crew, and like the crew is clearly making gestures or like signaling to each other that they want to either harm the captain or like, you know, mutiny or something like that. Uh, and the captain doesn't see those things, but he knows that because he's sort of forcing his crew to help him deal with this crab instead of just doing what it wants, that they're going to be against him. And so the captain is uh, basically against everyone. There's like 
you know, the monster who is trying to eat all the people, and then in addition to that, the captain has to deal with its crew who don't want to don't want to deal with the monster. They just want to get rid of it as soon as they can. Oh right, I forgot that one sheets the blood. It didn't give me anything. That's disappointing. And so it's very schemey. That's how one of my friends described it, and I would definitely agree with that. There's a lot of scheming in that episode. Very satisfying scheming too. It's like people plotting against each other and anticipating plots against each other and you know counterplots and, and blah blah blah. I don't want that. Yeah, I don't want that. Wait, I do want to go to that door though. So that aspect is very satisfying, and in addition to that, like I said, it's also a very uh, the way I describe it is like a lean monster movie. It cuts out all of the the stuff in that is often in movies that is not relevant to um, the action, essentially. And so you get a very fast-paced, very exciting, and uh, to-the-point monster movie, which I really liked. Wow, I am not a huge fan of these jam rooms, but at least they're moving very slowly. They're not very threatening, to be honest. More hearts? Good. You are a few floors too late to be any sort of threat to me. <laughs> yes. Last room is all the way up there. There's no item room, right? I mean, I may as well check that last room since it's right there. <laughs> Whoops, that's not what I wanted to see. Pretty big old monster. Nice. Got him. Oh, okay. That was worth it. Extra life. I've been. Staying away from the news recently, because I feel like there's just been nothing but bad news. <laughs> and it's sort of gotten quite depressing. But at the same time, I do like to you know, be informed about what's going on. I think for a long time I was very, uh, I was very apolitical and uh, I would prefer to sort of just not... There's three options. Funniest power is pretty good. Missing page two. Light. Mm, do I want light or do I want money as power? I feel like I already have a decent amount of damage, so probably rather have light. Oh man, it didn't work. All right. Well, in that case, I'll just take money as power. Or I could be greedy. Take both of them. Yeah, this won't backfire at all. Makes you small. So, yeah, I've been kind of trying to stay away from the news just because it's been so negative recently. I used to be very political and just didn't read the news at all. Um, but I've been trying to be a little more well-informed, you know, just so... Hey, I, uh, you know, I vote now and stuff, so I feel like if you're going to vote, it is kind of important to, to try to stay informed about things. Uh, obviously, you know, depending on your news source, you might have some amount of bias, but I try to be a skeptical consumer of media, I would say. Oh, this one spawn. Thank you. Uh, one thing I have been enjoying recently, uh, I read the New York Times mostly. Uh, well, not mostly, but the New York Times is like the newspaper I subscribe to, and then, you know, I get news from other articles or other websites as well, just as they come my way somehow, usually from someone sharing it with me or whatever. But one thing I have been really enjoying from the New York Times is a lot of their games. They have a lot of really good ones. The one called Letterbox is a lot of fun. I'm not uh, incredible at it or anything, but... I usually, I'm, I, I'm always able to finish it in like the number of tries that they give you. 
But I've never gotten one of the... The, like, crazy scores that they they post for their optimal solutions. Like, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you're familiar with how this game works, but... Do, do I, uh... Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa! The heck? I don't remember Grampus doing that. But the way uh, Letterbox works. Oh, nice. Oh, that's good. I already went up, right? So let's go down. The way Letterbox works is there's letters around a rectangle, and um, you basically just like draw lines between the letters to write out words, and you're trying to use all the. Uh, the letters for the day, but you can't use letters on the same side, one right after the other. And you also um, have to start. So if you if you write a word, let's say you pick the word dog, right, for your first word, the second word you do has to start with the last letter of the previous word. So it would have to start with a G in that case. Uh, so it's kind of like a nice level of complexity, I feel. Like, it, it's a little more complex than Wordle, in my opinion. And, uh... But it's not, like, so difficult that you need to... You don't really need to have, like, a super... Uh, fancy vocabulary to be able to enjoy it, uh, in my opinion. Because there's only... How many letters is there? There's... Uh, three on each side. So there's 12 letters. So, in theory, you could uh, finish it. You could actually, hold on, I'm gonna pay a little more attention here just because I always die if I don't pay attention for this fight. I forgot to use this. But, uh, you know, there's 12 letters. So, if you're using three letters per word, which is the smallest amount you can use, you can still win in the five tries they give you as long as you get, you know, enough of the letters every time you every time you make a word. And you can reuse letters, but obviously if you do that, then you're kind of wasting one of your turns if you reuse too many of them. Little brimstone. Summon big horn hand. That sounds pretty good. Try to take that. Let me out. Nice. Thank you. Oh boy. Stay away from me! Oh, okay. So, yeah, I've been really enjoying that game because, it's, like I said, it's not too complicated, but it's got enough complexity to where I don't just feel like I'm guessing you know, I do have to like sort of sit there and think about, well, what, you know, what am I going to try to do and how am I going to plan out my words so that I get it in as few guesses as possible. Uh, usually the optimal solution is like two words, which is kind of crazy. Like I think the, the fewest words I've ever done it in is like three. Yeah. Oh, wait, I need to go back and grab an item. Also, it's a good thing I'm so tiny because my giant fly protector just like prevents me from taking damage. Secret room. The bomb is bigger than me. <laughs> right here. Okay. But yeah, letterbox is fun. Um, there's another one they have called Vertex, thing, which is like a art game. Uh, that one doesn't really require too much thought, in my opinion. You just. Um, it's kind of like. Connect the dots, I would say, but a little more. Um, yeah, it's basically connect the dots, actually. Yeah, there's like dots, and it tells you how many other dots uh, each one is connected to, and you have to draw lines between them. And basically, the the app will like start filling in a picture as you do that. Oopsie, good damage there. That's not good. Oh my god, what am I doing? A little worried now. I have to not take any damage. See if we can find like a secret room. Wait. Yeah, 
Oh no, I didn't notice the purple tear. That's so sad. Alright, well, I tried. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, now negative 10? Yeah. Oh well, maybe next time. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll call it here then because I definitely don't have time for another run. But yeah, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Um, if you've seen any of uh, Season 3 of Love, Death, and Robots, definitely let me know what you think. Uh, tell me what your favorite episode is, or you know what you like, what you don't like, that sort of thing. Uh, I'd also love to hear other people's thoughts on Prehistoric Planet. Uh, the episodes are just releasing, so you know, you just tell me what you think of the ones that have come out so far or whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, have a nice rest of your day. See ya!